inside a skin cell on your arm you have maybe 12 to 14 mitochondria inside your heart like four to five thousand mitochondria in a single cell in your eyes like 40,000 mitochondria in a single cell in your brain there's way more okay so each mitochondria has a life cycle and it requires these cofactors to generate energy so every piece of energy my hands moving us talking the sound of my voice all of it is energy that had to be generated somewhere and it's generated in the mitochondria and that mitochondria is fueled like that energy is fueled via these cofactors of minerals and amino acid i mean look around mm. this room mm. everything is made of minerals if you took all the water out of your body you'd be a little pile of minerals <laughs> <laughs> so why do we go, oh, you know, take your vitamins? But nobody ever mentions minerals. Yeah, like yeah. I'm thinking, like when you explain it like that, and I'm, you know, I'm a geek for the mitochondria, and I, we were just talking with Lat about where densest mitochondria is, and this is like my new insight that I'm trying to send out to the world. In the female body, do you know what has the most amount of mitochondria? No, what is it? It's our eggs. Oh, of course, that makes sense. Because all the genetic wisdom that's in there, how strong the egg has to be, also, do you know something else about the egg that is so cool is that it actually sends a chemical message out and invites the most well-suited sperm to enter her for fertilization. It's the egg that chooses the sperm and it's done through a chemical messenger. So then my brain says, when we think about the minerals, it's like, yeah, that's how powerful we are. I just want to point that out. But when I think about that, I'm like, oh my God, when we look at infertility rates. Exactly. And we've, exactly. and if those eggs have, I don't even know how many mitochondria they have, but if they're not getting the minerals, could that be well the and if the sperm also doesn't have the minerals the egg yeah. might be looking for sperm that has enough minerals to generate the energy to swim up the <laughs> you know and, and you see so the yes. mineral mineral deficiency has so many i mean all of the electrical the entire electrical system in your body which includes all of the neurotransmitter connections i mean everything is generated with minerals when you follow you know as when i did the study that i did when i followed it all the way down it's all about electrical transference of energy through vibration you know Crazy. what is the difference so between, it's like a spark yeah. yes yeah it creates yeah. like a spark yes so, and you know it's interesting because i spent many years studying the krebs cycle and it's very complicated very complicated but the one thing i remember is that if i think of it in terms of a circle yes it was like it needed certain minerals yes primarily it needs some vitamins too it has to go in to, to make the Krebs cycle circle continue yeah. so that it can spit out ATP. Which is energy. Right. Yes. So here's the interesting thing. What happens when that mineral, it, it hits a certain stage of its Krebs cycle and that mineral is not available. What happens is that mitochondria goes into, it's not able to generate enough energy and the cell ultimately ends up going into an anaerobic function. And the way I like to think about it, you know, like if you go to the gym and you're, you know, first you're aerobic and then at a certain point, the reason your muscle gets tired is because the cells in that area doesn't have enough energy and the cells are going into an anaerobic function. The difference is that a cell that works aerobically and has all the minerals available can generate like 12 units of energy, not mm -hmm. the cell, the mitochondria, right? like 12 units of energy of yeah. ATPs, whereas when it's an anaerobic function, it's one. Wow. So it's one twelfth. So as this life cycle is occurring and what happens is basically amino acids and minerals come together as cofactors at each stage in this Krebs cycle. And when they're not available, literally your body can't generate enough energy. Okay, so the intersection of amino acid minerals, hormones, and neurotransmitters has become like this massive fascination for me because I feel like when we enter our 40s and go into our perimenopausal time and then into our menopausal years that we're not giving enough credit to these really important concepts like you're going to lose more estradiol, you're going to lose more progesterone if you're more mineral and amino deficient. Mm -hmm. And if you lose those, now you're going to lose serotonin, dopamine, acetylcholine, and GABA. So it's like a house of cards that just falls apart as a woman goes into her, her perimenopausal years. And if you're dealing with glyphosate exposure, that is exponentialized.